and peace, peace. First and foremost, all glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son that died for our sins, was buried for three days and resurrected so we could be reconciled unto the Father. We're going to get spiritual today. I hope you guys are ready to get spiritual. Make sure you guys hit that like button if you haven't hit the like button yet. And write something into the comments, man. Just drop anything, whatever you feel like dropping, but drop something. Um, I appreciate all the support so we can continue to grow this thing. If anybody's curious, I am going to be doing some live streams soon. I'm planning out a live sometime, first week of December. So be on the lookout for that. I might expand either on this topic I'm going to talk on today, or I might expand on it the celibacy topic that I talked about the other week. So that's what we have for right now. So, three-hour class, starve the flesh, feed the spirit, should be out. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this, but probably within 28, 24 to 48 hours of this video being uploaded, if anybody interested in that. So just hit me in the email. I'm still doing consultations, still having conversations. Hit me in the email. If you have any questions about God or hit me in, 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 uh, in the email and I'll get back to you and all of that. Now let's get to it. Um, so this is a topic that I'm probably going to have to teach an entire class on because there's so much to unpack, but I'm going to condense it as well as I can. All right. So I was in a room recently, was in a room uh, I was on Clubhouse. I have a new Clubhouse. I, I'm, I don't use it as much as I used to, but I have a new Clubhouse. I was in a room, and um, so mind you, I've been praying lately just for understanding on just the dynamic of marriage and and um, the dynamic between men and women and, and what's the real order of how things are supposed to go. I've been praying for a few things, right? So I was in a room. So this brother came into the room, and he came on the stage with me. He's talking. We're talking, and. Um, at first, I'm not really listening to him because he's talking. People are answering things. I'm not really listening to him because he have a, he has a bit of an accent, and I'm writing. So I'm like, ah, it's kind of difficult to. Well, I'm doing something on my computer, and I'm like, yeah, it's a little difficult to understand somebody with an accent, and work at the same time. It's like it was kind of not not the easiest to understand. But I, I I suddenly started to tune in, and as I tuned in, I realized that he was touching on all. I don't want to say all, but a lot of the things that I was praying about, a lot of the answers that I've been seeking, this brother was talking about the things that I've been seeking answers to. That's the understanding that I've been seeking. And I, I began to stop what I was doing and tune in and listen to this brother speak. Ended up listening to the brother for uh, an hour. No, no, I'm eight, like six, seven hours, maybe straight um, asking questions, just bond building with him. The brother's name is Kachi Neal. I'm probably going to bring him onto my channel when I go live or at some point, because I want him to start a channel of his own, because I think he has a lot of great information that people need to hear. Uh, I don't even want to say great information. He, he, he was teaching a, a truth that I had never heard broken down in that way before. That's what I'll say. And I just want him to, to start sharing his, his, his lessons and his teachings with, with other people. So I'm going to break down what he was talking about in my own words. So we were talking about, we got into the topic of fornication, um, about just like, you know, What's your idea on fornication? He said, you know, he said, um, and I'm, I'm a, I'm, this is all paraphrase, right? This is my own words, but his own words, this is a paraphrase. Um, so he said, you know, one of the things I, you have to ask yourself, um, if you're really spiritual, is, is, is that before I lay down with a woman, do I want to make this covenant? Do I want to make the covenant? Do I want to make this covenant with this woman? And all my spiritual, if you're spiritual, you understand that concept. He said, he said if you're spiritual, um, then that's the end of the conversation right there. That should be enough for you to think twice. Do I want to make this blood covenant, right, with this woman? And that should, be, that, should, that should end it for you right there. But he said, let's go a little deeper. So he said, you know, one of the things that happens, he said he, he, said he, used, he used to read the Bible and he would pray for six, eight hours and asking God to answer. He said, I read the Bible and I lay on my bed and just pray for six hours, for eight hours, asking God, God, please reveal to me. He said, I'd lay down and sit still for eight hours straight. And I said, God, please reveal to me what these things mean. And it's like, I, got, I, I understand the words that are on the page, but can, can you help me understand the meaning of what's going on behind the words per se? And so he said he, he would do this and he would pray and then he would start to get all these understandings. Right, these understandings would come to him after hours of praying. He would start to get these understandings, and so one of the things that he said, he said, you know, this. So he said, he said, I, it was revealed to me what happens in the spiritual realm when a man and woman, you know, copulate, lay down together. So physically, you just, you know, you, you, as we as we know, as I hope we know, 
uh, for the people that have been rocking with me for at least a few years is that you have a body, which is your physical body. You have a soul, which is your expression, your, your personality, your expression. And you have um, a spirit, which is the life that is in you, which is your life, right? So, for example, if you, if you, when you, if you, call out of work you don't call your job and say hello um my, my work uh my body's not coming into work today you, you you don't say that you call the job and you say hello i am not coming into work today well who is the i am you don't say my my leg my hand my head my eyes my feet the, hey hey my, my feet are not going to walk into work today my feet aren't coming in my feet my body my legs my arms my chest they're not coming in today you want to you, you don't say my body isn't coming in today right you may bring your body, but forget your brain. You, some people may say, yeah, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I left my brain, my, my brain at home, and I'm, I'm here physically, but mentally I'm not here. You, we've heard that terminology, right? Um, but but, no, but you've, you've, you've never been somewhere without your body being there. However, you're distinct from your body because the I am isn't your body. The I am is the you living within your body, right? That, 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 that allows your body to move and function. So... Um, so we got into that. We were just talking about how humans exist on three planes at the same time. You know, you exist on a physical plane. You exist on a plane where your soul exists, and you exist in a spiritual plane. He said he was saying a lot of people want to see God, but they've never even actually seen an entire human. Like, how could you fully understand and grasp the concept of God in its entirety when you have never even seen a human on all planes of a human existence? You've only seen one dimension of a human existence. So you know when we talk about two-dimensional reality, three-dimensional reality, four-dimensional reality, and et cetera, we've, you've only seen a one-dimensional reality of human existence. However, you have a soul and a spirit that you cannot see that we all know that exists, but you haven't seen that. So you, as, as something as finite as a human, how could you think that you're qualified to question, refute, or disagree with God when you are are living in a one-dimensional physical reality and haven't seen anything beyond your one dimension that you currently exist in physically, albeit knowing that other aspects of yourself clearly do exist, right? So, so we, we began talking about that. So in, in going into that conversation, what we, be, what we began to, to discuss was that we, he was saying that um, when a man and woman lay down together, you, you see the physical copulation but what you don't see is what's happening in the spiritual realm right alongside of what you're doing physically, right? So the first aspect of this, I'm going to reserve for a class that I'm going to teach, probably following up the class I'm releasing now. But this is the aspect I'm going to get into right now. Um, one of the things that happens spiritually when a man and woman lay down together is in the spiritual realm. For, so a man is the head, a woman is the body. So there's, you know, as you know, the scripture that says two become one. Right. So what happens in the spiritual realm is when a woman is when a woman is a, has not ever been with a man, she has her own head. Right. She has her own head. She has her own focus. She doesn't know longing for a man necessarily. She might be curious and interested and have hormones, but she doesn't know deep longing to be connected to a man necessarily. Right. But what happens when she lays in a man, you know, he, 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 you know, anyway, so they're, they're both have their heads in their bodies. Right. But in the spiritual realm, when a woman and man lay down together, the woman loses her. She, she cuts off her head. Right. Her, her spiritual head gets chopped off. And then in, in return, she takes on the man's head. And in taking on the man's head, the man has to lose his own body. So he, she, her head gets chopped off of her body. His head gets chopped off of his body. And his head goes on top of her body. And her body goes underneath his head. So in the, in the spiritual, those two become one. The man being the head, the leader, the ruler of the body, and the woman being the body. This is one of the reasons why a woman is to respect and submit to her head. And a man is to love his body as if it's his own, as the Bible says, right? A man is to love a woman as if she's his own body, even to the degree of being willing to give his life for her because it's about her body, not his body anymore. And she becomes about his head, not her own head anymore. Right. So it, there's a fusion that happens. So a couple things happen. One of the things that happens when a man and woman separate is, if, you know, if 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 that was her only head, she's now headless. And she's a bit, she's a bit, she's a bit spiritually confused 
because she's headless. She doesn't have the spiritual head on top of her anymore. She sacrificed her head to be bonded to another. And the man sacrifices his body, even to the degree of giving up, giving up his life, if it comes to it, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, because his head now belongs to a new body. So, and when he gives up his own life, spiritually, he's defending his own body. Not, it's not a, it's the woman's body, but he's defending his own body because her body becomes his body and his head becomes her head. And that's the original order of how things were supposed to be. He was to protect, clothe, guard, and feed his body, and she was to submit to, obey, and follow her head. And that's what happens in the spiritual realm when two people lay down together. Now, a couple more things happen, right? What happens if a woman has multiple heads? Then she finds herself in inner conflict, not knowing which head to follow. This is where you get some lack of, 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 of willingness to submit. Where there's a wrestle for submission because you're just battling with other heads that have been, she's a multi-headed, she's multi-headed, spiritually. Right? She has multiple covenants, spiritually, and has multiple heads. Right? So you, you get those kind of conflicts. So, and then you get a situation where imagine if you're trying to, you're trying to walk and you want, you telling, you know, anytime, you know, the brain, the, the, the head tells the body what to do, right? And the body permits the head to be able to function, right? The, I mean, the, the, the body gives the head purpose because without no body, what point is there for a head without a body for the head to operate, Right? So the head tells the if, if the head tells if, if you want to pick up a glass of juice and drink it, um, and you tell use your head to tell your right arm to pick up that glass of, of grape juice and drink it, what happens if the if the body decides it doesn't want to listen and follow its head? There's chaos, right? You you and you you ended up kicking your foot instead of drinking. Now you're not able to feed yourself. Now both people are suffering because because I'm not able to eat because when I tell my head to eat i mean when i tell my body my arm and leg to pick up the fork stick it in the food and put it in my mouth my body gets up and starts doing jumping jacks so now i'm not able to eat and me not being able to eat isn't only affecting me because we're one body it's 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 hurting us both my head can't i can't function properly as a head and my body is is, is losing weight not properly nourished and it's affecting my brain the whole body gets messed up when one any one part of the body right if the head can't properly direct the body the body is, is, is it, that those those are, those are two in the same right so we have these situations where we have people that are running into walls bumping their heads making mistakes just imagine a chicken you know how a chicken looks when you chop the chicken's head off and a chicken is flopping left and right bouncing up and down it has no head it still has bodily function but it's without a head so we have a lot of this in our society now we have a lot of headless people because they've made covenants right and, and they've given up their head for the sake of the spiritual covenant that they've made they still have their physical head they can still think physically but when it comes to spiritual matters and and why things may not be going the way that they want it to be they or why they're not finding love why this isn't happening they find themselves a bit lost because they cut off their spiritual head in exchange, you know, for the head of the, uh, their spiritual head in the man. And the man did the same in exchange for a body. So this exists, and, and so that's one degree of this. There's multiple levels of existence, and I'm going to talk about that at, at, probably in a class or a live stream, or maybe I bring my brother on, he'll break it down in his own words himself. But so that's one of the things that's happening, right? Now, of course, I believe in Jesus Christ, so I believe a headless woman uh, or you know, can be reconciled and a bodiless man can be reconciled in Christ Jesus, that the blood of Jesus Christ is a new covenant that covers, that has the ability to cover those former covenants we made and make them obsolete and wash them away. So a woman now has a head in Christ, right? Um, so I, I believe in that the power of Jesus Christ can will, overcomes that. But people without Christ and without true surrender to Christ, because if you, ain't, if you, you it's, about, it's not about, it's about fully surrendering your will over to God. Through Christ, it ain't just about saying, "Oh, I believe, I believe." Believe if you believe, you do the word, you do the work, you fully surrender your life over. That's true belief, right? That's the testament of your belief is how far are you willing to go. Um, but so I believe all that can be reconciled. However, I, I, I want to just discuss the spiritual component of what's happening. This is how it was designed, right? This is how it was designed. So 
sometimes it may be easier for somebody to walk, uh, uh, let's just say hypothetically a woman's in a relationship and she's had several heads, it may be a little easier for her to walk away from the relationship because she feels like, oh, she already has other heads and it's easy to find a head, you know? Or she, you ain't the only head, you weren't the only head of her life anyway, she might feel like. like on, on one plane of existence, but spiritually, you know, no, but on, on, a, on a, maybe on a soul plane, um, she may feel like, oh, I got a bunch of heads, so I'm, I'll, I'll be just fine without you, you know? So that's something I want us to think about. Just understand that, so when you lay down with a woman, the covenant that you're making spiritually is, am I willing to make this woman my new body? And the woman is saying, am I willing to lose my head because I entrust this man to be my actual spiritual head? And this woman to be my spiritual body. So that's a lot of the game that women and men play. It's that, 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 that a lot of people are dating now and that's that trade-off. She's looking at you and saying, hmm, can I, am I willing to give my head, away, to, to, to chop my head for this man and, and make him my head? I don't trust you. What do you do for a living? What is this? What is that? How much you make? How many people, how many, all of these different questions to see if, if she can trust you to be the head on top of her body, on top of you guys' body. And you're looking at her physically, right? A lot of men are more visual. We're kind of looking at a woman physically. We're looking at her beauty, how she looks. And we, we look, care about some things about the mind, how she functions and cares for certain things. But a lot of it is the physical body is what we're paying attention to at first, right? So we say, and, and so men are like, oh, I can make that. She's beautiful. I can make her my body. Now, there's more to it, but that, that'd be the thinking. Oh, this, we'll see a woman say, oh, that, that's wifey material just looking at her. Right? Because you're looking at the body. So I, could, I could be the head. Of, I, I'm, I'd willingly be the head on, over that body. So I, I just wanted to bring attention to this, and this, there's more aspects. This relates in, in other ways. We were talking about this for a, a few hours. So this is just a little glimpse into 15 minutes of the conversation that was being had and just the discussion. Um, but just that's, that's something to think about, man. You know, do you want to make this your body? And a woman, can I, make, can I trust this man to be head over my life for life? You know, that's the covenant that you're making when you lay down with somebody. You just see the physical, but you're not seeing what's happening spiritually. You're not seeing when she feels headless, when she feels lost, when she feels confused, when she feels sad, when she's having internal conflict because she doesn't know why she feels so, so detached from her own self because she used to have a head and she gave up that head to make you her head. Now, like I said, Christ is the head of all. And in submission to the will of Christ, all those covenants could be broken and we can be restored and reconciled onto Christ properly. Be reconciled onto the Father through Christ. And that's one of the, this is why he had to come. I'm going to get into that on multiple different on aspects, but this is one of the reasons Christ had to come. You know? Uh, many, I mean, he came to die for our sins to, to make a new covenant with us through blood so we could be reconciled onto the Father and become the Father's children. And one of the things we were talking about is God is holy. Right. So that when the Bible says the penalty for sin is death and death is separation from God. Right. So how could something holy be connected to something unholy? So in our sin, we are unholy. Right. Connected to wanting to be connected to something holy. And how could a, something holy be connected to something unholy and sinful? So Christ came to bridge the gap of that separation. So that we are, can be made righteous through faith in Jesus Christ and that his blood covers an infinite being, became a finite being to shed his infinite, uh, to gave up his infinite life on the cross and was resurrected for our sins to pay the price that we would have to pay in death, which is separation from God. And we are reconciled onto God through that sacrifice, through that covenant in Christ Jesus. And we're, we're reconciled onto the Father. Because the, so that we can become righteous and be filled with God's spirit so that we can become holy and righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. How God can't be connected to something unholy. The penalty for sin is death, separation from God. Adam and Eve got separated from the garden in closeness with God when they sinned. They were separated. So to be brought back in, a blood covenant had to be made to pay the price that we paid in sin that separated us from God. And now through that blood covenant, that sacrifice, we are saved and reconciled back onto the Father. 
and it, it, it's more, it's, it's more, <laughs> it's more. I'm, I'm trying to condense it the best way I can. Forgive me if I if it didn't come out all the way the way I I intended it. But um, as you guys know, guys, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe He's the only begotten Son of God, and that it, Jesus Christ, God. The word of God came in the flesh and dwelt amongst us, lived a perfect and spotless life and gave his life on a cross for our sins, was buried for three days and resurrected so we could be saved and reconciled unto the Father. And I just wanted to produce that message and give that message to you guys and, um, and just say peace, man, peace, peace, peace and love, guys. Make sure you guys drop something in the comments. Let me know how you feel. Let me know your thoughts about the topic that was just discussed today. Um, just, just share with me and share the video, man. Share the video with your friends and your people. You know, don't, don't support me, support me openly, man. <laughs> support me openly and publicly. That, that'll be a, a good help to get these messages out there and keep growing. Class coming soon, guys. Also, I got two new videos I uploaded on Patreon just this week. Anybody interested in more content, more of the life lessons that I'm learning, more of my, um, the understanding that I'm getting, um, sign up for the Patreon and get that understanding. Class coming soon for Diamond members on Patreon. Peace, 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 and love.